He is the innovator of violence, and he is here in GWF. What a huge, huge match this is going to be. Here at Chaos City 2, you are looking at the legendary Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer, of course, a former ECW champion, one of the most legendary hardcore wrestlers of all time. But this is a very interesting concept, even for someone with the caliber of uh, Tommy Dreamer, this Chaos City match with different weapons allowed as the match goes on. This starts as a singles match. As we go on, Kendo six chairs, tables, and eventually, anything goes. Tommy Dreamer is here, but we await the arrival of the GWF World Champion. There he is, the hero of the capital, the man of current events, the star of Berlin. And a man who is now in the 280th day of his world title reign. A man never, ever lacking in confidence. Pascal Spalter won the uh, GWF world title from Crazy Sexy Mike at Mystery Mayhem last year in 2016. He has defended it against all comers ever since, including Doug Williams, Orlando Silva, Cash Money Aircan, and most recently a global warning against Al Snow. Spalter defending in Controversial circumstances against Snow. A victory after a low blow. Well, he's beaten Al Snow, but can he beat another ECW and WWE alumnus in Tommy Dreamer here at Chaos City 2? Spalter, a big TV star here in Germany, as he'll tell you himself. And the innovator of the Dre Schusch, which means that's a wrap in German. Will that be all she wrote for Tommy Dreamer? Will it be a wrap? If Spalter can hit that move, essentially an angle slam on the innovator of violence. Crowd here in the Kessel House, very strongly behind Tommy Dreamer in his efforts to take the GWF world title away from Spalter. So once again, very interesting rules here. As this match gets underway, GWF world title on the line. Will it be 280 days and out for Pascal Spalter at the hands of Tommy Dreamer? Referee is going to have a, a hell of a job keeping this one under control. And 
listen to this hostile reception for Spauder. GWF fans clearly not happy with the man who has represented them as champion for what, three quarters of a year now. All right, bell has gone, we are underway. Referee is checking his watch. Well, there's the bell rather, and for the first three minutes here, this is a simple singles match. Then after three minutes, kendo sticks will be allowed. If we are still going after six minutes, chairs are permitted to be included in the match. Then tables after nine minutes. Falls count anywhere after 12. And if we are still going 15 minutes in here, then anything goes. It will be no holes barred between Spouter and Dreamer at Chaos City 2. Collar and elbow touch. Uh, Spouter backs Dreamer into the corner and gets a clean break. Crowd with an ECW chant. Lots of love for Tommy Dreamer, who is one of the most iconic figures from the heyday of ECW. Dreamer goes behind into a rear waist lock. Spouter escapes into the wrist lock and Dreamer with a counter of his own. Dreamer, as I said, a former ECW champion and no doubt he'll be looking to add to his impressive resume of titles here. A Chaos City against Spouter. Spouter, the champion with the shoulder block, sends Dreamer crumbling to the canvas. I think Dreamer was a little bit taken aback there by the power of the champion. Dreamer gonna take his time here, regroup. is that veteran instinct of Dreamer prepared to take this at his own pace. This time it's Dreamer who gains the advantage once again into a wrist lock. Spouter again backs Dreamer into the corner. No break here, Dreamer holds on to the wrist lock. He'll add some extra torque and now grabs the side headlock. Dreamer sent to the ropes, a shoulder block. And unlike when Spouter shoulder block Dreamer, when Dreamer does it to Spouter, the champion does not go down. You can hear the countdown. We are five seconds away from kendo sticks being allowed in this Chaos City match. That siren means the first weapons are permitted. As Dreamer will go to the uh, ropes, a shoulder block. Again, Spouter doesn't go down. Dreamer finding it difficult here to take the champion off his feet, but maybe that's where some kendo sticks might come in handy. Dreamer will charge again and again, the champion doesn't go down. Well, Spouter and Dreamer are having a, a conversation. I'm not sure what there is to discuss, but Spouter's going to try and unload with the right hands now. It's Dreamer with the left. So four, five of them now. The champion is reeling, still no weapons included in this match. A big boot right into the midsection from Spouter and the elbow finally. That running elbow smash right between the eyes of Spouter sends the champion reeling to the outside of the ring. Dreamer drop kick. And it is outside the ring perhaps that Tommy Dreamer is most comfortable brawling all around the arena. We saw him do that 
many, many times to the ECW arena in Philadelphia. Will we see it again here in the Castle House? Dreamer with the beer right into the face of the champion. Goodness me. Dreamer even left some for himself. Channeling the Sandman. Perhaps a little bit there. Big slap across the chest from Dreamer. As I said, Dreamer in his element when he's outside of the ring. I wonder if Spalda, the champion, is starting to wander slightly. Whether he has made a mistake agreeing to this match under rules that suit the challenger, but that will help Spalda as Dreamer's hand went into that steel ring post. You see Spalda, like a pit bull, leaping on top. Now he's been able to regain the advantage. Spalda goes under the ring and we have the first kendo stick in the match, my god. again and in just a few moments time chairs will be allowed but meanwhile Spalda bringing kendo sticks in in the for the first time in the contest the siren rings again so now it is kendo sticks and chairs that are allowed as we enter into the seventh minute of this championship match Control against Tommy Dreamer sends him face first into the turnbuckle. A chop first to the chest and one right in the abdomen, right in the stomach of Dreamer. Spalder, obviously the uh, the younger of the two men, and he is doing a number here on Dreamer. You wonder. For all of Tommy Dreamer's experience, if the longer this goes, the more this benefits Spalder. Although, having said that, of course, given the unique stipulations involved in this match, the longer this goes, the more weapons are involved. And that's got to suit Dreamer. Dreamer sends Spalder into the corner, Spalder moved out of the way, and Dreamer went shoulder first into the post. Spalder avalanche in the corner, and a snapmare takedown on Dreamer. We've seen this many times from Spalder as he uh, sits on top of the back of the neck of Dreamer. A move that actually, as strange as it looks, actually applies a, an enormous amount of pressure. That significant body weight of Spalder right on the cervical part of the spine. And of course it allows Spalder to taunt the crowd. Spalder needs to conserve some of that energy, focus it on Dreamer. Clubbing, leaping blow into that area of the net that he was weakening, but only good for a one count as Dreamer manages to break free again. Choking Dreamer out, and of course, you see the referee starting a five count there. At this point in the match, we are not yet in a situation where it's no holds barred. So, Spalder was obliged to break that choke hold. It's another reason, though, that the strategy here is going to change as this match evolves because if that had happened, what, six or seven minutes later, that would have been perfectly legal. Count is running again. We are just seconds away from tables being allowed. And now they are. The 
the siren rings. So now, nine minutes into this match, kendo sticks, chairs, and tables all permitted in this Chaos City match. So far, we have only seen a kendo stick used by the champion after he pulled it out from underneath the ring. Spout up. Big body slam on Dreamer. And Spouter gaining in confidence, taking the time as he so often does to antagonize the GWF fans. Spouter, big elbow, no one home. No one home, Tommy Dreamer moved out of the way. Referee has a count on, both men are down. We are up to a four. Both men now move in, this could finish by double count up, but it won't because Spouter is up to his feet. Dreamer, with the assistance of the ropes, is also up to a vertical base. Dreamer gets the boot, gets for a clothesline and takes the champion down. Spouter going down a little easier than he was in the opening few minutes here for Dreamer now. The innovator of violence on the second turnbuckle, unloading with right hands into the forehead of the champion and now biting, biting, Tommy Dreamer is biting Pascal Spouter. <laughs> Irish Wits and Spouter into the corner, gets the elbow up, does the champion, into the face of Dreamer, it's a neck breaker from Tommy Dreamer, the back of the head of Spouter, bouncing off the canvas, is it enough? No, Spouter gets out at two. And Dreamer was just a, a half a second away there from potentially becoming the new GWF World Champion. Now hang on a second, Dreamer has found a couple of steel chairs and of course that's been legal now for several minutes, nearly five minutes. This is the first opportunity that Dreamer has had to take advantage of these rules. Dreamer setting up a chair. Spouter, I don't think, knows what's going on at the moment. Oh, Spouter! Dreamer trying to send him face first into the ridge of that chair. Dreamer will go to the right side. Drop toe on it, it's Dreamer who goes face first into the chair. Potentially a turning point. Dreamer could be out, and Dreamer got out at two and a half. Six, nine, out, the countdown is seven, running again. Six, four, and we are just seconds zero, away from this one becoming nine, false count seven, anyway. Up until eight, now, pinfalls or submission had to be registered inside the ring. But now, as you hear the siren for a fourth time, Falls count anywhere here in the Kessel House. And Spouter gets crushed by Dreamer on the top turnbuckle. Champion took too long. Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer has a chair. Spouter is hung upside down. The champion with nowhere to go here. Take a run up. And that chair in the face of Spouter and Dreamer with the drop kick. The steal onto the face of the GWF World Champion. Spouter is reeling. Oh, Dreamer, going to look for that Dreamer DDT, got countered by Spouter, and it had to be because if Spouter had been dropped on his head on that steel chair, you've got to believe that Tommy Dreamer would now be the GWF World Champion. Dreamer getting hit with that kendo stick again and again. Russian leg sweep by Dreamer. 
with that kendo stick across the throat of Spouter. Dreamer starting to feel the energy of the crowd and that kendo stick right across the back. Oh God, it's the cover from Dreamer. Dreamer with the cover to win the world title, did he know? No, 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 no. Spouter got out at two and nine tenths. It was honestly that close, a tenth of a second at most from Tommy Dreamer picking up the GWF world title. Dreamer has not lost a step. Dreamer, a swing, and a block by Spouter. Spouter, the clothesline takes Dreamer down. But Dreamer was gonna play baseball with that kendo stick. Was Lining up for a home run, and Spouter very fortunate to block that. Now what is this from the champion? Spouter has wedged a chair between the top and middle turnbuckles in this opposite corner. Dreamer into the corner, back first, right into the metal. And finally the countdown goes for what will be the final time. After five more seconds, all weapons are allowed, no holds barred, and of course, falls count anywhere in the building. Spouter now choking out Dreamer. We have seen a gradual escalation of violence in this Chaos City match. Match we are seeing for the second year in a row after that incredible women's tag team Chaos City match last year. Yeah. Dreamer gonna try and super expand onto the chair and does it. He does it. The chair is flattened and the spine of Pascal Spouter may be seriously damaged. is writhing in pain. And Dreamer is listening to the demands of this GWF crowd. You can hear, they are asking for tables. Dreamer is searching underneath the ring. Oh my. Tommy Dreamer has just found what he was looking for. Dreamer. With that wooden table. And Spouter has not moved since being suplexed through those chairs, but... Worse may yet be to come for the GWF World Champion. The star of Berlin, as Spouter calls himself. Well, the light from that star may be about to be extinguished here because Dreamer is going to try and send Spouter in. Spouter puts on the brakes. Spouter now has Dreamer up. Looking for that Dre Schwoosh. And now Dreamer. Oh God, Dreamer's gonna go for the Death Valley Driver. Both of these men trying to find ways to get their opponent into the table. And there's the power slam. The Spouter slam on Dreamer by Spouter. And that is enough. Pascal Spouter defeats Tommy Dreamer and retains the GWF world title. What a war between Spouter and Dreamer in the Chaos City match. But the 280 day reign of Pascal Spouter will continue after he was able to put away the innovator of violence, the iconic Tommy Dreamer here in the Kessel House. And if Tommy Dreamer can't put Spouter away, in a match that suits Dreamer down to the ground, you have to ask, what will it take? Who can beat 
Pascal Spalder and take away that GWF world title that he has made his own. Dreamer, still absolutely stunned here after the sheer brute force of that Spouter slam, that running power slam through the table. As we continue to survey the carnage from this year's Chaos City match. I think Dreamer has asked for a microphone. Let's see what Tommy Dreamer has to say after that defeat. The fact that people still chant ECW 16 years ago and we never had a show in Germany, it truly represents what great hardcore wrestling fans are here in Germany. Thank you so much. deal with something called a VCR tape was to right here in Germany and I want to say because of a power slam magazine that was based out of uh, Germany man they covered us when no one else would so thank you so so much and everyone talks about the US independent wrestling scene and the UK independent wrestling scene but trust me I follow this business Germany is on fire with professional wrestling because of hardcore fans just like you guys Dreamers, hopefully not the next drunken Sandman's, but that'll probably happen. And I watched one hell of a show, and listen, yes, you are the champion, you know why? Because you beat Tommy Dreamer, you didn't cheat, you didn't need to do anything, you beat me because you were the better man, and I thank you for the fight. Class act is Tommy Dreamer. These people pay your salary. If it wasn't for these people, you wouldn't be standing in the ring with a Tommy Dreamer or an Al Snow or anybody like that. So keep up your talent. And you don't know whatever the future holds, but guess what? You don't ever have to go to WWE. You don't have to go anywhere else because this is your home. And don't ever forget your home. Dreamer holding up the arm of the GWF World Champion. Thank you very much, Mr. Tommy Dreamer. Und deshalb möchte ich hier jetzt ankündigen, das ist schon die zweite Legende, die du besiegt hast. Respekt, absoluten Respekt. Ja. Deshalb habe ich in zwei Wochen etwas ganz Besonderes für dich. Und zwar wirst du diesen Titel in Hamburg gegen Matt Riddle verteidigen. Bleib mal bitte hier. Bleib mal bitte hier. Mit einem Grinsen kommst du hier in diesen Ring und verkündest mir mal. 
bei den nächsten Gegnern niemand geringeres als Matt Riddle. Ich stand in diesem Ring. Ich habe Crazy Sexy Mike besiegt. Ich habe Doug Williams besiegt. Ich habe Al Snow besiegt. Ich habe Tommy Dreamer besiegt. <lacht> es ist irgendwann auch mal Zeit, das Ganze wert zu schätzen. Ach, mit Scher. Mich Champion sein zu lassen, leben und leben lassen. Ahmed, was ist dein Problem? Du willst, du willst, dass ich gegen Matt Riddle kämpfe? Ich habe dein Interview gehört. Du meintest, am liebsten würdest du selbst gegen Matt Riddle kämpfen. Also mach das doch auch. Weißt du was, Ahmed? Du willst kämpfen? Dann kämpf doch gegen mich. Dann kämpf is getting a little bit out of control here. Tommy Dreamer trying to stop this. It's not your business. It's not your business. Also, Ahmed. Ahmed, huh? You want to fight? Hey, let's fight. Let's fight. Okay, Tommy Dreamer. Disrespect to Dreamer from Spalter. Oh, and Dreamer. Dreamer's had enough. Dreamer's got the chair right into the back of the champion. Can you blame him? It's a Dreamer DDT from Tommy Dreamer. Spalter was asking Ahmed Cher whether Cher might choose to fight him himself. Show some respect. You got Matt Riddle, and any time you want me, I know what happened last time, I'll come for you for free. Thank you very much, Germany, I love you. Dreamer helping out Ahmed Cher. Ahmed Chair, the GWF president, was being challenged by Pascal Spalter after Chair suggested that Spalter should defend the GWF world title against Matt Riddle. Spalter getting in the face of Chair, saying Chair should fight him himself. And in the end, Tommy Dreamer, well, you saw what happened. Dreamer disrespected by Pascal Spalter. And Dreamer fighting back with that chair shot. The champion may have retained the GWF world title, but Tommy Dreamer is walking out of here under his own steam. And then it's Pascal Spauder, the GWF world champion, who finishes the Chaos City match flat on his back in the middle of the ring.